What is happening, everybody? TC here with Smoky Mountain Knifeworks, smkw.com. Today, we've got another one of our blade steel series, and this is one that a lot of people have been asking for and asking about. Today, we're gonna be talking about CPM3V, where it come from, how it was developed, and what you can find it in. Before we get started, though, if you like this video and if you like this series, smash that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, follow us across all social media. I'm talking all of them and ring that notification bell so you will know when we drop new videos, especially ones like this in this Blade Steel series, educating you and giving you more information so that you're better armed to make the right decision. Now, without further ado, light that up. Now today we're gonna to be talking about CPM3V. And to really look into the development of CPM3V, you're gonna to have to go back. So 3V was uh, actually it kind of got started in its development around 1994. It was actually, uh, it received its patent in 1997 and was actually released in 1997. But to start talking about 3V, you really have to go back in time a lot further and go beyond Crucible. So back in the 1960s, there was a company called Vasco Metals Corporation. And in 1964, uh, Harry Johnston, and it's spelled a little different, it's spelled J-O-H-N-S-T-I-N of Vasco Metals, he filed for a patent for a new steel, uh, and he was making it for hot forging dyes. Um, and reason being, this steel, um, he was intending it to be used in hot forging dies uh, because he needed something that would maintain a high hardness in high temperatures and that was very difficult to find. Now with this steel they set the vanadium content to between 2 and 2.6 percent as that provided the best combination of wear resistance, grindability, and toughness. They had tried it with different uh, varying amounts, uh, any less you lost one aspect, any more um, made it, uh, the, if you put in more, of, I want to say around 4% vanadium, um, it made the grindability absolutely horrible. Um, put in less, it made it more grindable, but the wear resistance and toughness wasn't there. So between 2 and 2.6% is really where that sweet spot was. Now, the steel was released and subsequently named Vasco Dye, because again, hot forging dyes. That was its purpose. Soon thereafter, they made Vasco Tough and Vasco Wear. Now, those are starting to look a little bit more common, and uh, Vasco Wear was used in a lot of knives uh, in the 1960s, 70s, and 80s. Um, you'll find a lot of 1980s Gerber knives, uh, especially like the old lockbacks from the early 1980s, um, used Vasco Wear in them. Um, and the patent for Vasco dye actually expired in 1982 and since it only covered carbon content as low as 8.8 percent it actually didn't cover Vasco tough and since it didn't mention tungsten content it didn't cover Vasco wear so all of those compositions were up for the taking um, Vasco tough and Vasco wear the argument could have been made that those were available since you know the patent shouldn't have covered those anyways but just to be safe nobody really touched them uh, just to avoid a lawsuit now after the patent run out in 1982 companies started making their own versions um, including ones from Latrobe there were tons of them but the ones that are best known are going to be the ones, uh, including ones like Crucible, making crew wear. Then, in the mid-1990s, Crucible began looking into powdered steel versions of these steels. And after a lot of testing and evaluation, they went after a patent and they called it CPM3V. So this was the same composition as Vasco dye, but they made it in a powdered steel version. Now what that did was that actually made uh, the carbides in it much smaller um, and made it a much more dense product and it actually increased the toughness and wear resistance exponentially. I mean, it went through the roof. Um, now, it comes in with a composition of 0.8% carbon, 7.5% uh, chromium, 1.3% uh, molybdenum, 
and 2.75% vanadium, 4% manganese, and 0.9% silicon. Now, 3V was released, like I said before, around 1997 and was used in knives very quickly, very soon after that, um, after its initial release. And while it was never, it's never really seen common use as a blade steel, it's never been widely used by a lot of different companies, it has seen very consistent use over the years. And just like crew wear, it offers a really good combination of toughness and wear resistance. And we've actually seen recently just how tough and wear resistant this steel can be um, when we put it in the right application with this reef knife right here. This is the F6. We just recently did our uh, Will It Cut series on this knife. And uh, I would have to say this has been probably our best performer yet as far as the toughness and the wear resistance of this blade given what we put it through. Uh, next up we're actually going to sharpen this and see how 3V sharpens and see how this knife in particular sharpens uh, and then we'll go from there. We're really excited to do that. Stay tuned for that. That's going to be coming up on this channel very very soon. But like I said this thing showed incredible toughness and wear resistance uh, and strength uh, in that Willet cut test that we performed. Now, it also, even with this level of toughness and wear resistance, it still performs really well in, guard, in regards to edge retention. And while not being a stainless steel, there's still enough chromium in 3V to classify it as a semi-stainless steel. And it's still gonna perform better than things like D2 and 1095, obviously, um, as far as corrosion resistance goes. And for all of this, we have Vasco Dye to thank um, and, and Vasco Metals Corporation. Without their development, 3V wouldn't have come into being. Now, it might have come into being, you know, maybe in a slightly different composition, but the original development came from Vasco Metals Corporation and the development of Vasco Dye uh, subsequently. And that's what's happened throughout the blade industry and throughout the steel industry is a lot of these steels have come from other parts of the market. I've always said that a lot of these powdered steels weren't originally intended for blades. They happen to work really well for blades, but a lot of them were not originally intended for that purpose. A lot of them were intended for purpose as high-speed tool steels or in big machinery. And that's the case with this steel. Maybe not so much in its current configuration, but in its origin, absolutely. And I tell you what, it's a phenomenal blade steel. And like I said before, it hasn't seen um, extensive use as a blade steel, but it's seen very consistent use uh, over the last 20 some odd years, almost 30 years now, and has performed really well. It's a, it's a phenomenal blade steel. Is it for you? I don't know. That's your decision. But we're here to show you what it's all about, tell you what it's all about. That way you're armed with more information and you can make the best decision possible. Folks, as always, it's been me, TC, here with Smoky Mountain Knifeworks, smkw.com. And remember, if it cuts, like CPM3V, then we carry it.